In this video, we want to look at a truth table for a given function and try to write the function or the Boolean expression for that truth table. And then also go ahead and try to simplify that Boolean expression and that function as much as we can using uh, Boolean properties of algebra and uh, de Morgan's laws. So let's start by looking at a truth table. Uh, this truth table is, uh, has three inputs, A, B, and C, and one output, which I've labeled F. And you'll notice that um, there are eight total rows because that's how many different combinations of inputs that we can have when we have three inputs. And some of those sets of inputs produce a zero out of our output, and some produce a one. And what we want to try to do is write the Boolean expression with ands and ors and all of that that would give this whole function, give this whole table, um, you know, no matter what inputs I gave, it would give the right output. So how do we go about doing that? Well, what we do is we focus on the rows that produce a 1. And we try to express those rows specifically independently of each other and then put them together in an expression that works. So what I mean by that is I look at this first row that produces a 1 and I see that it's 0, 1, 0 for A, B, and C respectively. And I want to know, well, how do I specify this row? Or how do I create a Boolean expression that will produce true when A is 0, B is 1, and C is 0? Or when A is false, B is true, and C is false? Okay, well, I noticed my language there. I just said when A is 0 or when A is false, and when B is true, and when C is false, right? So that, that and should give us a clue. I'm anding together these three conditions, that A is false. Well, A is false is true when not A is true, right? So not false is true. And I want B to be true. So and B is true. And C is false, which means not C is true. And so this is the condition, or this condition will be true that is to say 1, when A is 0, B is 1, and C is 0. And this is the only condition, 0, 1, 0, that will make this whole statement true. Right? If we try to plug in 0, 0, 0 into that, we get z not, not 0 is 1, and 0 is 0, and not 0. So 0 and 1 is 0, okay? So that gave us a 0 not a 1, right? So the only time we're going to get a 1 out of this expression is for these three inputs. And then we do the same thing for the next uh, output of 1, right? So here's an output of 1, 0, 1, 1 for A, B, and C respectively. Okay, when is 0 true? It's never true. When is, uh, what, what's true when, when A is false? Not A. Not A is true. And B and C. And so this condition, or this expression is true only when A is 0, B is 1, and C is 1. And then lastly, the only other row that produces a 1 is A and B and C, when they're all three um, 1, or true. And so A and B and C is true. Now any one of these three conditions causes an output of 1. So it must be the case that either this one is true, or the second one is true, or the third one is true for the whole thing to work. And so to get the whole expression, we simply OR those three individual rows together, and that gives us an expression that will produce the entire table for those given inputs. So I'm ORing the first two red rows together, ORed with the last row. Hopefully that makes sense. I invite you to pause the video and make sure that um, this is producing the right output for any of the rows, right? The idea here was that we created an expression that produces ones only in the three, in this case, the three rows that that should happen in. And uh, for every other case, that should end up producing a zero, right? But the idea was we focused on the ones, tried to specify for each of those ones, what is the condition that produces that one, and then move on and or, or each of those conditions together.
All right, so we've successfully created a Boolean expression for this table, but it's pretty cumbersome. It's pretty long. There's a lot going on there. It'd be nice if we could shorten it, and who knows if we can. In order to, to find out, we have to be familiar with some of the properties of Boolean algebra. And here are those properties. Now, there are a lot here, and you don't have to have them memorized. Um, I would focus on uh, specifically De Morgan's laws. You might want to know them pretty well. Um, a lot of these other ones will make sense to you because you'll have seen them in other other areas in math, right? So, for instance, the associative and the commutative and the distributive properties uh, are very similar to what you've seen in math class, and you might want to try to draw um, parallels there to help you remember. It's also helpful to think of uh, or as addition and and as akin to multiplication, not because that's what they are, but because they uh, they kind of behave similarly uh, in Boolean algebra as they do in regular algebra. Uh, so for instance, uh, if you look at the or function as addition, a or zero, well what's a plus zero? That's just a, right? Or if you look at and as multiplication, what's a times one in regular algebra? That's just a. a and one is also just a, right? Uh, they also follow the same order of operations. Ands uh, take preference over precedence over ors. Um, when you're doing Boolean expressions, though I will be liberal with my use of parentheses, so there's no ambiguity there. Uh, again, just kind of look through these and familiarize yourself with them. I invite you to pause the video. Hopefully they make sense to you. They're a little bit, some are easier to understand than others, um, but we'll look at some of them as we try to simplify the expression that we just came up with by oring these three together. So, I'm, on the next slide here, I'm going to have an expression that is these three rows ORed together, and uh, we're going to look at how we can simplify that using these properties. So here we go. First row ORed with the second row ORed with the third row. So let's focus on the first two rows to start with and see if there's any simplification we can make. I see that we've got not A and B in both, both rows. Um, not A and B here, as well as not A and B here. Okay, well, if they're the same, then uh, let's look at the, what's different and see if we can make a simplification. Not A and B and not C, or not A and B and C. Let's just sort of think about that logically and, and see if there's something we can do here. It seems like it doesn't matter whether or not C is true. If C is true and not A and B is also true, so if we just... Let's assume not A and B is true. If not A and B is true, if this part's true, the underlined part, and C is true, then this second row is going to work out. It's going to be true. But if C is false, well, then that means not C is true. And so if not A and B is true, then the second row doesn't work out anymore, but the first row does. So either way, whether or not C is true or false, one of these two rows is going to come out true. One of these two rows is going to have a 1. And so it doesn't matter what C is. We can reduce these two rows, because they're ORed together, to just not A and B. And let's look and see back at our list here why that is. Uh, it actually happens to be this adjacency property here. If you, if you read this carefully, it says A and B or A and not B is A. It doesn't matter if B is true or not, because both of these uh, expressions are here, A is going to be the result of this. If B is false, then this part comes into play. If B is true, then this part comes into play. And either way, A is what we're ending with, and so the result is just going to be A either way. That's what's going on here. We've got C and not C, anded with this expression, and so it's just this expression that matters. So let's go ahead and, and uh, simplify that step first. So I've gotten rid of, I've combined these first two rows by getting rid of C or not C and not C here, and I just have not A and B, the red underlined part, or the third row. Okay, so just copy down the third row. Okay, so what can we do now once we've done that? Well, we want to sort of compare these two rows and see what we can find. Um, I've got A and not, A and B and C and not A and B. I can't quite do the same thing I did up here because I've got this extra and C down here. If this and C weren't here, then we could 
you know, just have B, uh, reduce this to B, but this C is here. However, there are, is this B that shows up in both, right? We've got this and B showing up in both. Um, and so I can use the distributive property kind of in reverse here. So I've got A and B or A and C. That's, that's what's going on here. Not A and B or A and B and C. Because B is in both of these, I can sort of reverse distribute that. I can factor it out, if you will, and get this. B and, so I'm factoring out the B, and not A or A and C. And that's reversing the distributive property. And then there's one last simplification we can make. We've got not A or A and C. Well, this simplifies down simply to not A or C. And to see why, just realize if, if not A is true, then not A or anything else will be true. But if not A is false, that means A is true. And so A, this becomes true. True and anything is just that thing. And so that thing in this case is C. And so either, either A is false, in which case not A is true, or A is true, in which case it doesn't matter what I'm ending it with. That thing is just going to be right here. And so this is the final simplified expression that we've produced from our original. And you can see how much simpler it is. If we were trying to uh, implement this in logic gates, we would see, you know, up here I've got one, a not, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, different Boolean operations happening there. And down here I've got one, two, three. So I've moved from eleven down to three. That's going to be a lot simpler, a lot more efficient, and a lot easier to understand. And if you actually uh, take this expression, B and not A or C, and go back to the original um, truth table, you'll see that it matches it really well. I mean, it matches it perfectly, but you'll see pretty clearly um, how well that, that works out. Um, so B and not A or C. So here, B and, I see, okay, well, the only time there's a 1 is when B is true, right? And, um, you know, either A has to be false, right, in which case these are good, or C has to be true, in which case this one's good, um, and that eliminates this other one where B is true. And so uh, there you have it. That's a simplification of a Boolean expression that we've produced from a given truth table using the Boolean algebra properties.